your vision for our region, especially the South Bay? What are your two major priorities? And again, more importantly, how would you implement them? We'll start with you, Mr. Henry. Two priorities. Well, my first priority would be, uh, I was going to say education, but let me say that second. I think my first priority is going to have to be economics, because everything else depends on the economic situation of our state, and particularly of this region. I have, honestly, I have had an incredible time these past couple months uh, driving across this vast district. Uh, from the South Bay, I grew up here in the South Bay, uh, grew up in Chula Vista, San Ysidro area. We, lived, we bounced all over the place. I love the South Bay. I've been here my whole life. I've learned a whole lot about the Imperial County and then the Riverside County and what's going on up in these areas. And the biggest area of need is the area of job creation. And I think what I can bring to the table here in understanding that is, is I've talked to several different businesses here. We do have a lot of low-income people here in the district. I care deeply about that. But one of the things I don't want to do is go around bashing the job creators. Uh, we're, in a, we're in a very difficult situation. I've met with, uh, and, and I can relate to, because I am one of the middle class people and, and even the lower middle class people that live in the area, and understanding that our taxes and our fees are just simply too high. I calculated it the other day. I pay, and you pay, about $10 in taxes every time, state taxes, every time you fill up your, your car with gas. That affects everyone. That affects the single mom. That affects me. That affects, that affects the multimillionaire business owner. But more than that, I'm looking at the, the, the thousands of small businesses that need a break. I've talked to so many business owners that say, I'm this close, Brian, to getting out of business. And if my taxes continue to go up, I talked to an attorney who runs a small law office a few weeks ago, and she said, she says, I'm one of those rich people, quote unquote, but I, because my office brings in six figures, but I pay four people with that. She says, I can't have my taxes go up. Uh, so I, I want to cut taxes. I want to make it easier for businesses. Uh, to function in California and not have to leave and, and go to Texas and go to Nevada and go to Arizona and these other states who are getting, uh, I'm talking to business owners that are getting phone calls every day from governors of other states saying, come to our state, bring the jobs to our state. And if we fail to see that today in California, we're losing. So edu uh, economics, job creation, and I've never known a politician who's created a job. It's the hardworking, small business people who create the jobs. Secondly is education. We've got to bring education back to a local level. 60, uh, or excuse me, 40% of the education budget today stays in Sacramento paying for bureaucrats, paying for people to sit there and, and administrate, and it's not getting into the classroom, and to me, that is a crying shame. That has to change. I couldn't agree with, uh, with you more on what you said. Uh, I do think that job creation is first and foremost. And I would also agree that we are, as was said earlier, uh, a far too litigious state. I think a lot of companies purposely don't come here because of the laws that we have, the liability that we have. And we do have to reform that. We have to have tort reform. I think that is very, very important. I think we have to, to have a situation where we can bring companies here and they can understand that they're not going to be sued because they create jobs. They're not going to be sued because they expand. And I think that is important. Uh, we don't have that business climate now. I did uh, recently come from a Fortune 500 company. I was in the private sector, a vice president. I can tell you that concern is real. And we do lose jobs because of that. I, I would agree with you. I'd also say that uh, earlier we were talking about infrastructure. I mean, we need to improve the infrastructure here, water in particular. We have to guarantee water for a lot of the high-tech jobs. We haven't been able to do that. We need a, a stable source. So I agree with that profoundly. Um, the, number, the number two issue, the second issue, is, is really hard for me to say because it really is between education and public safety. Uh, I think that they're co-equals. Uh, I do think that education is very important for the long-term benefit of our children, our grandchildren, and we are doing something about it. We're doing something about it up on the Mesa. We're doing something with our community colleges. We are getting better, but we're not where we need to be. And so we are making progress, and I, and I appreciate that. We haven't funded it appropriately. The mismanagement over the last four years since I've been gone in particular, you've seen cuts, dramatic cuts, 
seems like the budget committee didn't care much about the kids and they just kept cutting and cutting and cutting and that has to stop. But at the same time, I would say this, that crime also is, is just as dangerous for our community in the sense of long-term benefit for us too. We have to make sure that those that commit crime pay for it and also, and more importantly, have opportunities for kids so they don't commit the crimes. You know, it, it is unfortunate, but our youth, our young people are the ones that are committing crimes. It's seldom people that are middle-aged. Maybe we're too tired, I don't know. <laughs> but the reality is that it's not us who are committing the crimes, it's the young people. And so we have to have opportunities for them. Those are the things we have to do, and we have to fight for that. And again, I, uh, I look forward, if I'm lucky enough to win, I look forward to working with you. I have nothing but respect for you and for what you've done. And I have to say that uh, I was never a pastor. I have many pastor friends, and it probably is the most difficult job out, out there uh, outside of being a mother.